everlasting sea of green stretched up to the highest mountains. Crystal waters ran down to anoint the valleys below. And where there is water, there is life. Billions of creatures colonize this wild land. Rivers teemed with fish, and the sky was full of birds. It was home to the most formidable beasts to roam the earth. This was Europe, millennia ago. We were once part of this natural world. But over time, the wilderness became our enemy, to be conquered and exploited. Today, like the miracle of old, life slowly arises from the ashes in the lands known as the Wolf Mountains. This region, on the borders of Slovakia, Poland and the Ukraine, is part of the mountain chain of the Eastern Carpathians. Its name dates back to medieval times and is taken from one of its oldest inhabitants, the wolf. Few humans dare venture here. This is the kingdom of predator and prey, home to a host of unique wildlife. Animals that control one of the most complex ecosystems found in Europe. The idea of a lost paradise in the heart of Europe inspires three Slovakian filmmakers to travel to the Wolf Mountains and discover how nature is reverting to its former glory. Their main challenge is to capture shots of wildlife behavior in very difficult terrain. They hope to film creatures that were once on the brink of extinction, like the bison, beaver and wolf sure signs of a return to wilderness. These animals are elusive, but the team is determined not to use artificial means to attract them. Over the next two years, it requires patience and ingenuity. The first task is to catch sight of the largest surviving herbivore from the forests of the ancient past, the bison. To track them successfully, they need to wait for the first snows of winter. Five decades ago, a small herd of Wiesent bison was reintroduced from captivity into the Polish part of the Wolf Mountains. Their descendants now freely wander through the forests. It takes a trek of tens of kilometers trying to spot them. Only deep traces left in the snow reveal their presence. Although large, the bison are surprisingly timid and evade every attempt to get close. To see a bison in the wild, is like traveling back in time. And the dream of discovering an ancient wilderness begins to become reality. These huge beasts were once part of our prehistoric lives alongside giant Oroch cattle and wild horses.
Just like their ancient relatives, these large herbivores live off all kinds of flora and can radically alter the environment in which they live. Living generations of the wild horse are the Hucal horses, one of the oldest breeds of native ponies in Europe. In winter, they eat shoots found beneath the snow. They particularly relish bark. This destructive action kills off the trees, but creates an open landscape. As a result, a variety of meadows and bushes can begin to flourish, providing habitats for thousands of other species. It is forest management at its most natural. After several days, the team manages to get even closer to the bison. This herd now totals almost 300 animals and is the biggest population of bison across the Carpathian region. Numbers are still far lower than in centuries past, but it's hoped these will increase as the herd is left to colonize new territories further afield. The team hopes to get the chance to meet these primeval beasts elsewhere on their wilderness trail. The most secretive and controversial creature of this wild country is its top predator, the wolf. To film the natural behavior of these specters of the forest requires a huge amount of luck. At the end of winter, their presence is tantalizingly visible. It's clear evidence they're alive and well. But to see them, let alone film them, proves at first impossible. It takes six months before these legendary animals are spotted for real. Two adults and a young wolf appear in a small clearing in the forest and mark their territory. Seconds later, they vanish into thin air. To increase the odds of capturing wolves at large, the team sets up video traps at key points where a pack might pass. During playback, the team discovers that one wolf has ventured into beaver terrain. The trail is irresistible. Like the bison and the wolf, the beaver is another species that was virtually eradicated across Europe. Prehistoric hunters saw beavers as easily accessible food. They were numerous and safe to hunt. As a result, they were the protein most often consumed. In the Middle Ages, people hunted beaver for the alleged healing power of their scent glands. Beaver was also believed to be part fish because of its scaly tail and webbed feet. So these parts of its body were very popular to eat on the days when meat was forbidden. As this amounted to over half the year, and as the human population grew, the beaver soon became a very threatened animal. Somehow it survived and is now slowly returning to its old wilderness habitats. Here in the Polish part of the Wolf Mountains, there are signs of its extraordinary activities. Beavers dramatically change the structure of the small streams they inhabit. Thanks to their voracious feeding habits, 
they clear small pockets of forest to create open spaces that attract many plant species that love the light. Building dams, they create a sophisticated chain of lakes and wetlands that within a short time are brimming with life. These wetlands also provide rich feeding grounds for hunters like black storks and numerous birds. Many other animals reap the benefit of the beaver's unique architecture. Some use their dams as bridges to cross the water. Unfortunately for the beaver, these act as platforms for a hungry predator to pounce. It's clear that wolves are attracted to this watery area for food, but only at night. One evening, their howls are heard in the distance. As the pack approaches, the sounds of their cubs become all too apparent. From the noises, it's certain they've killed a beaver nearby for a midnight supper. Despite hearing a whole wolf pack during a kill, the team is no closer to filming them in action in this area of forest wetland. They move up to open mountain terrain where the wolves can't hide. Higher up, the fresh grass of the alpine meadows attracts a lot of red and roe deer to feed. The most vulnerable are the young, and they must remain hidden from the wolves. But here, over the summer months, the deer seem to enjoy an almost carefree existence. One roe deer tries to overcome the lack of action by picking a fight with an imaginary enemy. E 
even with temptations of ready meals like these, there is neither sight nor sound of the elusive predators. But there are sounds of a different kind. It is now late summer and the start of the deer rutting season. The forests resound with the roars of the stags in a cacophony of primeval passion. Stags have to compete against one another for the attention of the hinds. The older, more experienced males round up their conquests into harems and must defend them at all costs. A year has passed since filming began, and still the wolves remain firmly out of sight. The team decides to try their luck by the banks of a major river that runs through the Polish side of the Wolf Mountains. Riverine environments are usually very fertile and an ideal place for animals to gather. But most European rivers are heavily populated and bordered by roads. The very presence of humans pushes the wildlife away and the animals are forced to survive in less favorable areas. But there are no humans on this stretch of the Seine River. Only wilderness and wildlife thrive. It is a favorite crossing point for animals in unusually large numbers. As so many different species are attracted to cross the river in search of food and to cool down in warm weather, it's possible to film them all day from sunrise to sunset. The animals have no place to hide, and in only a few days, more are seen than over all of last year.
Out of nowhere, a huge brown bear comes down to the river for an afternoon bathe. It is rare to have such an encounter with one of Europe's greatest mammals in the wild. Then some days later, the team strikes further gold. A lone wolf appears on the opposite bank of the river. Its full belly suggests it has recently eaten, and its prey lies nearby. But it's not long before the wolf returns to the shadows of its forest domain. The largest and most powerful animals to frequent this river crossing make up one of the biggest bison herds of the region. They spend most of the time feeding in the compact vegetation of the riverbank, and they regularly cross the river in search of other food to snack on. They will sometimes stay in the middle of the river, where they feel safe for hours at a time. When the herd ventures upriver, their incredible strength is tangible. It seems as if the earth trembles beneath their hooves. Bison herds are composed mainly of females and their young, and by a few young bulls. But during mating season, the older bulls which can weigh up to one ton, will join the herd. The bull follows his prospective mate everywhere. He can be surprisingly gentle in his persuasions. These older bulls behave differently to the others and can't wait to start a fight. They choose to do this in dense vegetation out of sight. One bull comes down to the river after a violent bout. It's lucky to escape with few injuries. These fights not only expel weaker opponents, they can result in death. Amid all the drama, Another lone wolf is spotted taking a drink on the opposite bank.
Over the next day or so, there are no further sightings of any wolves, but the huge bear returns to the river for a bathe. After a while, the bear returns, but it's now almost night. The river is again full of animals. One wild boar is bold enough to confront the bear. The bear is wise enough to beat a hasty retreat. These brown bears go to the river to browse for apples under old fruit trees. Normally, bears in Europe are almost totally vegetarian. But the biggest bears take every opportunity to scavenge off the remains of any wolf kill. In times past, when there were many more herbivores in the forests, and significantly more fish in the rivers, the bears mostly ate meat. As a result, they were even bigger than they are today. Salmon and sea trout once migrated up and down the San River. But in the 1950s, all that came to a halt with the building of a dam for human needs. If these fish returned to these waters, Perhaps the bears could again be free to catch salmon, just like their wild cousins in Alaska. The abundance of all these creatures by the San River is extraordinary. But life here represents only a tiny fraction of what the natural world can sustain. Without human intervention, populations of animals would be far higher and the sightings of wolves and bears far more common. This small pocket of pristine wilderness is a true reflection of what the natural world could look like if left to itself. The only part of the Wolf Mountains that is strictly protected is the Bieszczady National Park on the Polish side. But the areas below the park have no protection. This is where all the animals go in wintertime, and it is open to human exploitation for hunting and logging. There are now no pristine forests left on the lower slopes. The only example of such an ancient forest is one very old oak tree found in the Ukraine. It's around 1,200 years old. In those times, bison, Giant auroch bulls and wild horses, now both extinct, would have grazed beneath its majestic branches.
But in the higher altitudes, some of these forests still remain. This is one of the most biodiverse regions in Europe. One of the most preserved forests lies in the Slovak part of the Wolf Mountains, the Stuschica Nature Reserve. Some trees are as high as 56 meters and as thick as two. This ecosystem of primeval fir beech forest supports hundreds of various species, from birds and insects to fungi and amphibians, like the curious salamander. Rare species of owls can also be found in this primeval forest, such as the enigmatic Ural owl. But the forest is the choice home of the wolf population. They use the shadows of the trees to give them every advantage to stalk and capture their prey, usually deer. The video traps set up over the summer eventually reveal some of the movements of these rarely seen predators in their daily search for food. Winter arrives in the Wolf Mountains with a vengeance. Conditions for all the animals are harsh. The herbivores, like the bison and deer, must go to the valleys where there is less snow and food is easier to locate. Temperatures at night can drop to below minus 20 degrees. Animals cross the San River in their perpetual quest to find things to eat. During winter, they must devise different strategies to survive. Some find food underwater, others from the bark of snow-covered trees. And for those choosing the easy option, there is always something, hopefully, to retrieve beneath the snow. A family of boars, filmed in the summer, returns to the river the young have clearly grown. Only the strongest will survive. It not only rests on the ability to find food, 
It depends on the physical condition of all the animals at the end of autumn. If they are fit, they will have a better chance of surviving another year. Some will fail to make it. But the winter has its advantages. A carcass provides a rich meal for other animals in this wild country. In the eternal circle of life and death, it pays to eat anything that can be found. Martins, for example, usually eat small mammals and birds. But they also enjoy fruit in the winter. This winter is colder than normal. Temperatures drop even further to minus 30 degrees. The river is frozen solid and the only place not covered by a thick layer of snow. This provides the wolves with a highway to capture prey more easily. Again, there is no sign of a pack at work. Only the sight of a solitary wolf disappearing back into its forest kingdom. After a few days, the weather warms and the thaw begins. The team has spent 500 days in the wild, and now it's time for them to return from the wilderness of their dreams and to reflect on their discoveries. Here in the Wolf Mountains, there are few opportunities to glimpse the animal that gives this wild region its name. Yet this top but secretive predator reigns supreme over the rivers, mountains and forests that make up this unique and diverse ecosystem. As animal after animal is seen emerging from the mist of the San River, a vision of a new European wilderness begins to take shape. This is a beautiful realm full of life and filled with all manner of creatures, both great and small. Giant herbivores migrate over the land. 
Rare mammals stalk its rivers. Strange beasts change water flows and forge new habitats, just like they did in the ancient past. Generations today have rarely seen a real wilderness like this. Such places belong in Africa and North America, but there is little in Europe to compare. Now Europeans are beginning to value the first glimmers of wildernesses reborn and to recognize the possibilities of the future. But even in the Wolf Mountains, nature is not yet free to evolve. The areas that are well protected are still too small. If better protection is given to bigger spaces where nature can take care of itself. Much more of wilderness life will thrive. After centuries of exploiting nature for gain, it is time for us to pay back the debt owed to the wilderness of our past.